I'm a little bit upset because I've set up all the cameras in the living room and I was hoping for a cameo of Kubo, but he's upstairs, he's probably just eating my socks. I've wanted to shoot a music video for ages. You know, I, after I've done a few mini documentaries, the idea of shooting a music video became more and more attractive to me, but for some reason I've just been terrified to do it. I think it's because there's so much creative freedom with a music video, you know, you can go as wild and as abstract as you like. The amount of, I guess the amount of freedom that you have actually was a little bit daunting. But finally, just a couple months ago, I pulled the trigger, I shot my first ever music video, and actually, it all went well. Now, it all started with me watching a bunch of videos on Vimeo. I was watching a ton of music videos, and then I was watching a bunch of music video directors, then listening to podcasts with music video directors, and I essentially got super hyped up at the idea of shooting a music video, and I had to, I had to start the process that day. You know, it was one of those days where I was like, this is, this is the day. I'm gonna do it. So I asked my friend Josh if he knew anyone who wanted a music video, he sent over St. Lundy. I listened to a bunch of his music. This one song, You've Got the Wrong Guy, really reached out to me and just, I, I came up with this idea in my head and the song had just come out. So I was like, he might want a music video for it. I'm just gonna put together a video treatment and I'm gonna send it straight to him. Now video treatment is essentially a detailed plan that you can send to someone, like a client, to fully explain what the video is going to be. So it has how the video is going to progress, you know, you write all of that out, you include a bunch of stills and visual references to how you want the video to look, and it essentially tells the client in words what the video is going to be, what the end result is actually going to look like. Now these things take a long time, and generally they're nicely designed, so they have to look good because it's, it's kind of like almost like a presentation, it's like this, this is my idea, look at it and I hope you like it. And it was a bit of a high risk strategy for me to just go into writing a treatment without first speaking to the artist. I just, I write out the treatment and then I sent it straight to the artist. I said, hey, how you doing? I wanna shoot a music video. This is my idea. But the reason I did this is because I don't actually have any music videos to, to send back to. You know, if I had a bunch of music videos, I probably could just reach out and say, hey, I really wanna shoot a music video. These are some of my previous music videos. Let me know what you think. We can get the ball rolling on this one. And that would have been fine. But because I don't have any music videos to direct them to, you know, I've got, I've got car films and I've got surfing films, <laughs> but I don't have any music videos. I kind of felt like I had to approach with a detailed plan so that they would take me seriously. And the artist said, I love the idea, it's great, but unfortunately I don't want a music video for that song. But I have this new song coming out called Heavy Words and I want a music video done for that. I listened to the song, the first thing I thought is, this treatment that I've written definitely does not apply to that song. So I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board there. Which I think is another takeaway, you know, be prepared to to kill your darlings, essentially. Be prepared to change your ideas because it's gonna happen. You know, this is a creative process and part of being creative is knowing when a good idea just isn't quite the right fit. So just know when to kill it off and start afresh. So I sat down with this new song, Heavy Words, put it on, listened to it like a thousand times. Um, seriously, it was on throughout the whole house. I had it in my headphones, had it on the speakers, you know, wherever I was, I had this song playing and I was just, I was just letting it sit in my head and there were ideas forming and then eventually I sat down with Vicky, we were bouncing ideas off one another and we landed on this concept of having the different stages of a relationship signified by kind of these minimal sets that we'd set up in a warehouse. Now initially, we had the idea of shooting it as a one-up, which is a one take. So everything has to be perfect. You know, I have to nail everything, the artist has to nail everything. And then we quickly realized that this is our first music video and this is also the artist's first music video. That's a lot of pressure to put on everyone. You know, I have to nail it, they have to nail it. This is all our first times there's a chance that this could just totally fail and we might end up with nothing. Which brings me on to another important takeaway, which is know the limitations and know the scope of your project. If you execute a really simple concept well and do it perfectly, it's gonna look a million times better than a really complicated concept that's executed poorly, or worse still, you fail to execute it and you waste everyone's time. And when we were coming up with the concepts for the music video, you know, it's very easy to get carried away and think of these grand ideas that seem absolutely fantastic in your head, but you have to be realistic with yourself and ask, do I have enough time? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough crew to actually pull this off? And if the answer is no to any of those, then you're gonna have to pull it back a little bit. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to shrink things a tiny bit. You can still stick with some core concepts from that grand idea, but you just have to be realistic with yourself and know when to pull back. And we did that with the music video, and we did that with our concept, and 
And it ended up going well. It ended up being incredibly smooth and painless. And it was just a fun process. It all went, everything just perfectly knitted into place. And that's such a good feeling, especially when it's your first time doing it, because I expected it all, I expected at least something to collapse in front of me and just it all to kind of crumble down, but it didn't. You know, the house of cards, by the end of the day, was still was still a house of cards. And that's impressive. <laughs> and not to blow my own trumpet too much, but I think the reason it actually went well is because of the time that we put in in the pre-production. The time you put in in pre-production is so important. You know, if you can get if you can get a bunch of headaches sorted out before you start shooting so you don't have to worry about them on the day, it's gonna help you so much, okay? Because there's nothing worse than an unexpected headache on the day of shooting. Uh, if you can try and iron out all those kinks before you actually turn on the camera, it's just, you're setting yourself up for success there. And as I say, not to blow my own trumpet, but we did a lot of pre-production work, partly because this was our first time and we just wanted to make sure that all of the ducks are in order. We did a lot of pre-production work, made sure that all of the furniture was sorted way ahead of time. We made sure the location was sorted way ahead of time. We made sure that all of the set diagrams that we had were like fully drawn out and worked out. We had everything ready to go. So when we arrived on the day, I had these diagrams, we set up the set, it all fit in the place because everything was measured and it worked. It just, it all worked. So just to summarize the ideas that I've kind of run through in this video is when you reach out to someone that you want to shoot a video for, make sure they take you seriously, make sure you're prepared to kill your darlings, you know, come up with new creative ideas if for whatever reason the ideas you come up with aren't going to work anymore. Uh, make sure that you keep your concepts simple or at least within the scope of what you think you can achieve and also pre-production. Pre-production is king. Do it. So I think that just about wraps things up for today. In the next video, we're going to talk through the visual style and how I created the visual look for the video. So you can look forward to that one. Uh, but anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section and I will catch you in the next video. See ya.